This video is meant to serve as an introduction to the idea of the derivative function. Here's the goal. Given a function f, we want to derive a new function whose value for a particular argument x is precisely the slope of the tangent of f at the argument x. That is a mouthful, so let's really see what this means graphically. On the left side here, we have the graph of a function f. And what we'd like to find on the right is a graph of the tangent slope function derived from f. How is this function going to work? Well, suppose we're able to calculate the tangent slope at the argument zero on the left-hand side, and we find that that tangent slope is negative one. Then the value of this derived function should be negative one. That's how this game is going to work. And now you can just, in this example, keep looking at different arguments. So suppose the tangent slope at the argument one is zero. Then we want the value of this tangent slope function to be zero at the argument one, and so on. Now in this example, it sure looks to be the case that this tangent slope function derived from the original function is linear, and we might guess that this is indeed what the graph of this derived function looks like. By the way, this is a mouthful to say, the tangent slope function and the function derived from f, so it's typical instead to simply call this function the derivative of f. So here's how the derivative works. For a given argument x, the value of this function at x, the derivative function, yields the tangent slope of the original function at x. So here's yet another picture for this. Since this new function is so closely related to the old function, we don't necessarily want to come up with a brand new name for it. Often what we'll do is we'll simply take the original function name and, and put a prime next to it to indicate the relationship that it's derived from the original function. This notation we might call the Lagrange notation after the mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. He was born in Italy, schooled in Italy early, then he moved to France and, and um, became known more as a French mathematician later. So here's our picture. At the argument a, the value of the function is f of a, and the tangent slope is given by the value of the derivative function f prime of a. So here's a question. How do you find the value of the tangent slope at an argument, given the original function? In other words, how do you calculate f prime of a. Let's think about this conceptually. We know how to calculate a secant slope. We can certainly take the value of the function nearby to the argument a and create this quotient which measures the slope of this line joining these two points on the graph. And what we'd like to do is take the limiting value of this secant slope as that other argument approaches a. And that should yield the tangent slope. Now, there's another notation we can use for this calculation. We could label this separation from A, this distance we move away from A, we could call that H, in which case, instead of using a brand new argument for this other location, we could simply call it A plus H. And so we'll notice that when we play the same game, calculate a secant slope, the denominator simplifies a little bit, and then we get this quotient, which measures the secant slope. And in this case, the way we obtain our tangent slope is to let h go to zero. And this too would be a way of arriving at our tangent slope. So we have these two, they're not different methods, they're simply um, different notations for the same method, really. What we're doing is we're taking a limiting value of secant slopes. And we could call this second version the h form. And I, I don't know a better name for this, so I'm just going to call this the other form. So the h form and the other form are the two sort of standard ways to calculate a derivative from scratch as a limiting value of secant slopes. So let's look very thoroughly at an example. We're going to look at the cubing function, and we're going to find a formula for its derivative. So the first solution, we'll use the h form f prime of x. What is f prime of x? So 
Here's a sketch of the graph of the cubing function. And we'll pick an argument x, and then we'll move away from that argument by a step that we call h. So here's x plus h, our other argument. And now our change in function value is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x. And our change in argument is just h. So here's our secant slope. And now, in order to get the tangent slope, we need to look at the limiting value of the secant slope as h goes to 0. That's the way we're going to sneak up on this tangent slope. So h in this process needs to go to 0. So there's our limit whose value should yield the derivative function evaluated at x. Now, a word of warning is in order. We may not simply substitute 0 for h. Looks tempting, but that's going to be a problem. And it's quite generally going to be a problem with these derivative calculations. Because if you plug in 0 for h, you're just going to get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. In other words, who knows what this limiting value could be? It's really up for grabs. So in each particular instance you calculate a derivative, you're going to have to perform enough algebra to somehow deal with this indeterminate form. In this case, our function is the cubing function, so we can replace these expressions respectively with x plus h cubed and x cubed. Now we can expand x plus h cubed. Hopefully you know the pattern from the binomial theorem to make that a very quick calculation. Nice simplification here, x cubes cancel, and we'll notice there's a common h in the numerator, which we can factor out. Now the magical moment, because now the h's cancel, and that troublesome h in the denominator is going to go away. Now we're looking at the limiting value of this expression. Now we have a sum rule for limits, so we could break this apart into the limit of th these three expressions. And we'll notice that x has been anchored for this calculation. x is constant for the purpose of evaluating this limit. It's h that's moving. h is the dynamic variable. So we identify where those pieces are. And the x we can treat as a constant. So this first limit is simply 3x squared. It's the limit of a constant as h goes to 0. This second limit, we can pull out the scalar multiple 3x and look at the limit as h goes to 0. And of course, the limit of h squared as h goes to 0 is 0. As a matter of fact, this limit is 0 also, and so this term gives us 0. And what shakes out in the end is the limit is just 3x squared. There you go. That's our formula for the derivative function. But let's revisit this calculation. We should have made a more general observation. Since x has been anchored, so to speak, so 3x squared and 3x are constants. So for example, if x had been 2, then the expression would have just been 12 plus 6h plus h squared. So for a fixed x, the expression 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared is actually just polynomial in h. In other words, what we really should have done was sort of just been fuzzy about this and thought, you know what? x is constant, so this is the form our expression is taking. It's just a polynomial in h. And we know that polynomials are continuous. So if we want the limiting value of p of h as h goes to 0, we can indeed just plug in h equals 0 in this case. And if we do that, we would obtain 3x squared. So there's really not a lot of conceptual work that should have been required to, do, to evaluate that limit. So here we are. If f of x is x cubed, f prime of x is 3x squared. And remember what that's saying. For an argument x, the value of the tangent slope is 3x squared. Now let's revisit the solution using the other form. So in this case, we're identifying a nearby argument w. We're going to take the change in function value, which of course is just f of w minus f of x. And the change in argument in this case is just w minus x. And now we're going to need to take a limiting value. And the secant slope is given by this quotient, and we want the tangent slope. So what we're going to need to do is anchor our calculation at x, and then let w approach x. So what we need is the limiting value as w approaches x. And that limit should give us the value of the derivative at x. Now, as before, a similar warning applies. 
we may not simply substitute x for w. That's not going to work because when we do that, we get quite obviously an indeterminate form. So, quite generally, it's always the case that when you set up one of these derivatives from scratch using a limit of secant slopes, it's not going to yield to a simple substitution immediately. You got to do some work. Now, in this case, the cubing function allows us to um, substitute these expressions for f of w and f of x. The algebra is slightly different in this case. If you know how to factor the difference of cubes, then you would arrive at this expression, and then w minus x cancels from numerator and denominator. Now, once again, we're going to make our general observation here. w is approaching x, and x is constant for this calculation. So this expression is a quadratic polynomial in the vari variable w. And so we should just be able to now substitute x for w. And in this case, what we get is x squared plus x squared plus x squared, or 3x squared. And indeed, that's what we were looking for. The value of the derivative function is, in fact, 3x squared. So a couple of questions might have come up in your mind already. First, is this much work always required to calculate f prime of x? And the answer is decidedly no. We're going to develop many shortcuts that will save a lot of time. It's, it's not always the case that you need to calculate these derivatives as limits of secant slopes. However, you should always have that option in mind. You should master this technique of setting up a secant slope and then evaluating the appropriate limit to find the value of the tangent slope, i.e. the value of the derivative function. And another key question is, how is this derivative function useful? So let's just take a look. Just go back to the basic idea of what the derivative tells you. In this example now, I'm going to have a, a function on the left and its derivative on the right. I'm not even going to provide you with the formulas. I'm just going to look at this graphically. So this is a conceptual exercise. The tangent slope of this function at an argument x is given by the value of this function, i.e. f prime of x. So how does this work? If if we wanted to know what the tangent slope of the original function was at zero, we'd have to somehow figure out the value of the derivative at zero. And in this case, it's negative 1.5. If we wanted the slope of the tangent when x equals 1 in this original function, we would somehow have to evaluate f prime of 1, which in this case turned out to be 1.5. We can sort of ask more sophisticated questions, like where is the tangent slope of f zero? So we can sort of eyeball it in this graph over here. We can see two locations where the tangent slope appears to be zero. But if we actually have our hands on the derivative function f prime, we could simply solve the equation f prime of x equals zero. If we could figure out these two locations where the graph of this function crosses the horizontal axis, then we would have answered the original question. These arguments, 0.7 and negative 0.7, those are the arguments where the tangent slope of the original function is zero.